There's a reason why consistently, even though the law says notify the police for five, with five days prior, we notify them three months prior mm -hmm. because we're expecting consistent engagement. We are expecting that they disagree. I mean, as far as democracy affects the country is concerned, the attitude is that no matter what happens, we are not going to allow them to protest. I mean, but you know, you sound a little bit, bit as though the police do not want you to protest. Absolutely think so. I'm saying that, remember the last protest we had was last year occupied Jolobi. We did that defying another court order. Do you understand? I mean, but why, why will the police from not the want very you to first, protest? From the very first, first face the country protest, they obtained an expert injunction. On that occasion, even the Attorney General said we should defy it because it was unconstitutional. We said, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to challenge it all the way to the Supreme Court. And that's what we did. We're supposed to do that on May 9, 2020, 2021. Mm -hmm. We ended up protesting in August after Macho Kaka and others had been killed in Nigeria. So the disposition of the, of the regime, for whatever thing, is that when young people gather to be, they, they are not seen as participants in our democracy. They are not seen as persons who are bearers of of, of policy concerns that our democracy should also be able to take up and solve is that these people, uh, they are a threat to our regime and our sustenance. And, and the police, you know, statement indicated that some of these young people were engaged in untoward behavior. I mean, in, in fact, think about it. When we first tried to do a protest, ministers were in parliament saying that we are being hijacked by terrorists, that we are operating with a coup d'etat mentality. It has never left us. I'm standing trial on the same charges. But consistently, we have... We have emphasized the point right. that the right and the freedom of protest belongs to every Ghanaian, young or old, and particularly young people. We are a young democracy. Mm -hmm. In fact, young people make up the majority of our electoral uh, population and even of our society. I, I, I want to look at some of the charges that you are facing. Okay. Conspiracy to commit unlawful assembly, unlawful assembly, causing unlawful damage, offensive conduct, offensive conduct conducive to the breach of peace, Assault on the public officer, defacement of public notice, and stealing. Let's talk about the last one. The okay. last one. Okay. Why did you take the key from the police ignition? Oh, is that the, is, the vehicle? Is that what the stealing charge is on? Because I haven't, I haven't quite reached there yet. But uh, I have been very clear. You see, one of the things which I, whenever we set out to do anything, we are doing so to be able to show Ghanaians the full scope of their constitutional mm -hmm. and rights in this country. One of the most important things our courts have held, as far back as 1974, when a police unlawfully tries to arrest you, you can beat up the police officer. In fact, somebody did, Asante did. And the court said, yes, that's what you're supposed to do. Nobody is entitled to, take away, to restrict you or take away your rights illegally. And this is another moment of that, where the police try to seize property, private property, illegally. And anybody who tries to, steal, to seize private property illegally is entitled to be resisted. This is that resistance that we're showing there. What, what we In saw. that moment, we were standing, we had brought a truck which contained medicine, food, and water, and placards for protesters. It had been parked under the trees that was attended near the Totoro station, not even on, on the road. It was been stopped there, the driver was out, things like that. Then we saw police officers forming uh, a wall around the vehicle. My understanding, initial, initially, I had assumed that they were trying to prevent the vehicle from moving onto the street. Mm -hmm. So I just came and told the driver, there was a laptop which was exposed. Take the laptop, raise the windows and close it and go. So that, I mean, they make, it is clear to them that this vehicle wasn't going anywhere. So we're standing there when we saw them bring a tow truck and immediately proceeded to tow the truck. Our initial instinct in that moment was to prevent it. So we stood in front of it as individuals in a way in which somebody, an environmental protester might chain themselves to a tree in the hope that the tree is saved. So we were, you know, putting our bodies on the line to protect it. Obviously, it meant nothing to them. And we started seeing the tow truck get into under our legs. And the video sh supports this. And so even one of the guys fell on the tow, on the tow truck. I see. And I left, and I, so I walked from it. So I started walking around the tow truck to see, is there a way in which you can demobilize this truck in fear that it might injure the individuals who were there? So it's, I, I went around it. I couldn't see how. Then I got to the where the driver was supposed to be. There was no driver in. Immediately, I mean, I am even thinking, but this is so in security incompetent to be able to leave a vehicle running in this scenario. So my first instinct is that I, I, I turn it off so that it stops. Now, when I did, I, I had the key, and I anticipated that they were going to rush me for the key. And so I ran towards the other side where the other police officers were and threw the key to them. 
Because my interest in that moment... You threw it to the police officers. The key was thrown to the police officers on the other side. In fact, they retrieved it in less than five minutes. I see, but it was quite a run before, yeah, well, before you did that. Well, well, I ran from where the incident was to where the other police officers were. Yeah, and, 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 and during this period, yeah. uh, it would appear that one of the commanders kept insisting that arrest, uh, arrest him, him. Arrest him and nobody, yeah. Why do you think that none of the officers, you know, moved I mean, on to arrest you? It, it, it's, it, it's difficult for me to speculate. Uh, my hope is that most of them recognize the, the unlawfulness of the order in that moment. I don't know. That's my, that's my guess. But for some, for some reasons, none of them wanted to move in that moment. I see. Then subsequently... Uh, well, then there was the statement that they couldn't find you. That apparently there was a manhunt uh, for me. We'll, and I <laughs> we'll talk about that manhunt. Yes. But reflecting on the incident, yeah. do you think it was a reckless thing you did? I think that it is reckless to deny citizens of their rights. I, I would do it today and I would do it ever consistently. And in fact, I'll invite every citizen whose rights have been oppressed, whether you are subject to unlawful arrest or unlawful seizure of property, that you are constitutionally entitled to resist it. Don't look at the fact that the individuals who are involved in that are police officers. In fact, our anti mandates us that those who are more likely to oppress us is those who we must resist. So for me, it makes no difference as to who is entitled to violate rights and who is supposed to be able to protect themselves. Protect yourself always, and I'll do that today. I mean, were you not worried about the consequences that could have... I mean, I am standing there in a public protest, which is a constitutional protest, where the presidents have made it clear that they were going to arrest us. And in fact, because of what happened last year, we know that when they arrest us, we're going to be subject to inhumane treatment. But we came out nonetheless. Because the bigger message, the health of our democracy is much mm -hmm. more important to me in that moment. And it will continue to be.